in this example problem, we have a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor that are wired in series with each other with an AC power supply. And we're given its max voltage. And we're given the angular oscillation of the circuit. So you do have to be careful when you're reading problems whether you're given the frequency or the angular oscillation of the circuit. So the first thing we want to do is find the instantaneous voltage from the power supply the instantaneous voltage across the resistor, the instantaneous voltage across the inductor, and the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor at 4 milliseconds, or 4 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. So the first thing I did was look up the equations for the instantaneous voltage across each of the various circuit elements. And notice that I am plugging in for the maximum voltage. So the maximum voltage is going to be the current times the appropriate resistance quantity. So this would be the inductive reactance, the capacitive reactance, and then eventually I'm plugging in Ohm's law for v, um, the voltage across the resistor. Now there's a couple of quantities we need to find before we just plug directly into these equations. Because while we do have the maximum voltage across the power supply, we know what the angular frequency is, we know what the time is, but we don't know what the phase angle is. And in order to find the phase angle, we need to find the inductive reactants, the capacitive reactants. So that's what I'm doing up here. I'm using the provided inductance, so 5 times 7 to the minus 3 Henry's times 300 gets you 1.5 ohms. The capacitive reactants, so 1 divided by the capacitance, which is 4 microfarads, so 4 times 10 to the minus 6, times our angular oscillation, so 300 radians per second, that gives you a inductance of, or not inductance, a reactance of 833 ohms. So now I can come down here, and I can find that phase angle, by using those values and the resistance given in the problem to find the phase angle. And remember the answer to that is in radians. So I can plug that phase angle in and I can find the instantaneous voltage across the power supply. Now in order to find our value here for the instantaneous voltage for the inductance, we have these values here. And in fact, we multiplied them together up here to find the inductive reactants. But now we need to know what the current is. So in order to find the current, I'm going to take advantage of this equivalent of Ohm's law, which is that the voltage is equal to current times the impedance. And so up here, I am calculating the impedance. So I plugged in the resistance. I plugged in the inductive reactants. I plugged in the capacitive reactants here. And I found the impedance. So I can plug that into this relationship to get this small current, 4.52 times 10 to the minus 2 amps. So I can plug that in here for the current, and I get this voltage. And you get a very small voltage across the inductor, which makes sense because the reactance is very small. I can now go down here to the capacitor, and we found the current down here. And we know what the angular oscillation is, we know what the capacitance is, so we can plug in and find our voltage across the capacitor at the 4 milliseconds. And then finally the resistor, we know the current, we know the resistance, so we can plug in our angular oscillation on our 4 milliseconds to get the voltage across the resistor at the 4 millisecond mark. Now I want to highlight here the idea that first that if I add this value, this value, and this value together, I get this value. So remember the instantaneous voltages across each circuit element add to the instantaneous voltage from the power supply. That's an algebraic addition so you can just add the values. So one thing what I did when I was done was I added this, this, and this together and make sure it matched that before I presented it to you guys. The other thing I, is I want to emphasize here is the difference between this relationship and this relationship here. You have to be careful that just like with the equivalent resistance, if you want to find the current across a circuit of a bunch of resistors in series, 
you would use the equivalent resistance. Well, you still have to use what's the equivalent resistance is here, except it's called the impedance. So you want to make sure you're using the impedance to find the current through the circuit, not trying to use just the resistance. So be careful about how you're applying the various forms of Ohm's law in this particular um, setup. In part B, we want to find the maximum voltage across each circuit element. So what I'm doing is I am taking, to find this one here, your maximum voltage across the inductor, I'm taking my current here times the inductive reactance, and then for the find the max voltage across the capacitor, I'm taking the current times the capacitive reactance, and then for the resistance, I'm taking I times R. So I'm taking the current times the resistance provided in the problem. This plus this plus this does not equal the 40 in the problem. So remember, the maximum voltages are not in phase with each other. So they're not happening simultaneously. So the maximum voltage of the inductors are not occurring at the same moment that the maximum voltage across the resistor is reached. So they are a vector sum rather than an algebraic sum. And you have to refer back to that phasor diagram in the lecture video to understand how we got the relationship between these voltages and these voltages. So remember, since the voltages, max voltages are not a phase or not occurring at the same time, they're not going to be an algebraic sum. They're a sort of equivalent vector sum to each other.